Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Minecraft and as ever it's the Dungeon Dragons and Space Shuttles mod pack which means we've got this massive massive quest book here with lots and lots of different quest lines to play through and I've been doing the black magic quest lines and making some doing some general improvements to my uh, to my tower so we've got the the big wizard's tower that you've all seen a, a million times by now and inside on the on what I've been calling the ground floor even though it's a sort of a raised up entrance bit I put in these chests, and these are all input-output chests for the various different um, blood magic systems that we've got down that we, I've been having running in the basement. Because I've decided it'd be nice to be able to just sort of trundle in here and set something running without having to faff around quite so much with going downstairs and feeding the feeding machines in, um, manually and all that sort of thing. So what we've got is we've got chests over here for the blood altar. Anything that's put in this chest here will automatically be fed down into the blood altar, um, imbued with life essence, and then put into the output chest over here. So as you can see, but there's a few things that have, have run through it or associated with it over here. And similarly, over here, I've got the same for the blood infuser. So anything I want to be infused can be put in this chest, and it will eventually pop out of this one. <coughs> like the gold promise acceptors. These are made by putting a cube of uh, a block of gold in the um, input chest. They'll go down into the infuser and come back out again. I've also got the blood chest up here, and this is the one that um, allows you to repair tools. So I can shove that in there and, and that in there like that. And as you can see, the damage is very, very quickly repaired on them. Um, this uses significant amounts of blood. However, we have, do have a better supply of it available now, and it will repair anything. So Tinker's tools can't be repaired in the Magma Forge, I don't believe. However... There is a small chance of things becoming cursed if they uh, when they, when they go through here, and if they do get cursed, you need to, you then need to have a another thing. You need to make a purifier in order to uncurse them. So this is an unfortunate side of its blood. Just you can use this machine to remove these bad effects on the tools. Um, unfortunately, it requires quite a lot of stuff, and I'm sort of procrastinating a bit on it because nobody's managed to get anything cursed yet. So I think the chances of cursing is pretty low. So at the moment. We seem to be basically okay with just using the blood chest to, to repair things and, and mostly not worrying about it, and that seems to be alright. So, how have I made those work, I hear you ask? Well, downstairs there is a horrific mess of pipe work going on. So we've got the blood tanks that we were using earlier. These are fed from the, um, from the uh, blood bank uh, building, which I shall show you in a moment. So these are, in theory, kept full from there. This is the main supply of blood. And that is then fed up this fluid duct here into the blood chest up there and also into the blood infuser up here. And the reason I've put the, moved the blood infuser, because it was down there, the reason I've moved it up to here is to, to reduce the length of these item ducts. Because that means because these item ducts are fairly slow at passing things around. So when you put something in the, um, in the chest there, it has to go down the item duct into the inf blood infuser and it has to go in the top, we discovered. And it then bimble, and then it's infused, and then it bimbles along here and goes up there. Now, most of the time, it'll be a sort of a fire and forget. I'll dump things in the chest, then clear off, do something else, anything else, and then come back a while later and grab the things I need out of the other chest on the other side. Um, but it feels like a good idea to try and make this a little bit quicker. The pipe, as I say, keeps keeps the the uh, the blood infuser and the blood chest supplied with blood, so that's nice and easy. Over here, we've got a similar sort of thing. The input chest for the blood altar is, is, is up there. So items come down this duct. This is a slightly longer one. Um, go into this chest here. Now, the reason I've done this is because we have the automation system here that passes things through whenever there's enough blood in the blood altar. And so I don't want that to... Um, to tr I, I don't want this to, to trigger and have something... I don't want to be triggering the one up there and then having an item making its way slowly down here, all the way around here, all the way along here, and eventually into the blood altar. Um, while Because that means that while one item is coming down, it might trigger to send another one down, and that could end up meaning that two things would be put in here and there wouldn't be enough blood in here to do both of them. So I've so we've, so we've kept the, uh, the chest as close as... Well, not, I was going to say as close as possible. It's not technically as close as possible. It could be a tiny bit closer. But we've got it pretty much as close as possible so this 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 is an, a relative is a nice short run and it doesn't and um, it should keep the system working and the system has been working before from here so the fact that I've now got that chest being fed from up there shouldn't make any difference it does mean it's slightly harder to tell how much stuff is waiting to go into the blood altar because you can't look at this chest and see how, and, and see how much stuff is in there waiting 
but I mostly don't really care as again it's going to be a fire and forget because this is, the whole process is relatively slow so I'll come along here dump in a few stacks of compressed stone and then come back a while later and find they're all in the in here having been processed so I think this should work we haven't really stress tested any of this yet because we haven't needed to you I haven't needed any more of the um of, of the of the uh, blank slates but for a little while because over here I made the, the reason I was making all those blank slates was to upgrade this to a to a, the next tier of blood altar so if I get my um where is it divination sigil it's like that and we have a look at this now as you can see it is a tier th now a tier three blood altar so you get a tier one blood altar from just having the altar there it's the altar itself there you get a tier two blood altar from putting in these blank runes around it in uh, the this sort of the is there's eight of them there in a, in, in, a, in a square but it's a hollow square there's nothing in the middle you then get a tier three by putting in another ring of the um uh, blanks, uh, blank runes around it like this and there's actually a gap in here so there's um, these runes are not the next one out so there's the tier no nope, don't do that the, the tier two runes are immediately out once one square out from the blood altar you then have a gap and then the tier three runes Mike is in the way as usual are down there in the um, uh, at the next level down <laughs> hello Mike thank you um, so we get we, we can get the uh, the tier tier three from that, but you also need to have these glowstone um, blocks up here, and they need to be on pillars that are coming up. At least I believe they need to be on on pillars coming up from the um, uh, coming up from the from the uh, blood runes. However, I seem to have got away without having anything in the corners here. So maybe you don't. In fact, let's find out. If I smash this earth. Yes, I still have a tier three blood blood altar, but it looks a little bit silly like that. So let's put that let's put that back. There we go. I mean, I know Minecraft physics allows things to just float in the air, but it looks silly, and I don't want that to happen. Now, while I'm here, now this this has meant that because this goes down, and it doesn't really matter exactly where it what's on top of the blocks, as long as they're the blocks themselves are in the right places. That has meant that I've been able to leave the um, incense altar here. Um, Without, um, without, and everything has just gone underneath it. However, having it here is completely pointless because this is here to provide a boost to providing life essence from pricking your finger with a sacrificial knife, and so it needs to be close to the blood altars in the in the building over there. So having it here is completely pointless. I should probably move this at some point, and maybe I'll put that on the to-do list to do in a future episode. The blood altar here, as, I, as it gets bigger and bit higher and higher level, this will extend further and further out. So the next level will be um, blocks along here, I believe, on the, on top of the floor. So um, at, at what is currently ground level in this sub-sub-basement. Uh, no, only one sub, single sub-basement. Um, and then a block further out along here. So in this, in this gap along here, and I'll need to dig all of this out. So... <clears throat> I'll probably have a sort of staircase coming down here, and then probably continuing down further... Well, it might be a bit head bumpy actually at that point. Maybe it'll get, maybe it'll be, it'll go in here somewhere, and we'll, we'll, we'll allow this to be a sort of an under, an access area underneath the blood altar to allow you to come down and, and build it up to the higher levels and see what's going on, whilst keeping up here reasonably flat and sensible. This staircase is now a bit bigger than it really needs to be because this is now a service area rather than a, a main area that needs to be visited. So. I might shrink this down at some point and just turn it into a into a, into a narrow staircase, a servant staircase like this one. Um, but for now, it, it it doesn't actually matter. It's just it's there. It works. It's okay. So I think that's yes, that's everything that's been done. Oh, this um this Hellfire Forge should probably be moved upstairs because it's a it's a thing that you come in and and just use. It's not a thing that requires infrastructure and resources to be fed to it. So it's a, it doesn't need to be there. Next, uh, I yes, I did some decoration on the um, on the donation on the blood bank. Um, basically, I extended with with a bit of suggest with some suggestions from Mike. I've essentially extended the uh, the roof line out a little bit, and that makes it look a little bit more sensible. It's a little bit less blocky. And inside, I put down some flooring. There's this sort of um, seared stone up the middle as a sort of a aisle, and then we put in some pews along the side because it's supposed to have a sort of a vaguely gothic, dark, evil church type feel. Other than that, 
functionally, it's just it remained much the same. We've still got the uh, the blood altar up here, which is you, where you can come along and you can do the uh, the pricking of the finger with this sacrificial knife, or the wearing of the spiky armor in order to, to produce a supply of blood, which will get immediately piped out into these tanks. Or you can do it a much less painful way and just come along here, grab these tanks, and take them off to the uh, the mob farm to fill them up. So let's demonstrate this. And now this one isn't actually empty, but I can grab it anyway. Let's grab one of each. So we can get those. And then we shall go flying off to the mob farm, which is a bit of a distance away. But I have the um, the elytra, which allows me to fly around now, and the fireworks that give me a nice boost as I'm trying to fly. So it's not too difficult to get over here. There is also the long underground tunnel that you can use to get over here, but it's a lot quicker to fly over. So I can open up the hatch and drop in. And this brings me to the next major thing we've be, uh, I've been doing, and then I had a bit—I did have a bit of help from Tristan with this, if I'm being honest. But it is still—it is—it is a useful thing. So over here, in here beforehand, we had um, these vector plates that were pushing mobs in and making them, forcing them to stand on the blood altar there, which you can see in there. And that meant you could come along here, you could take out the. Um, the, 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 the sacrificial nut, dagger of sacrifice, and you could poke them through the gap here, and they would immediately die, and that would leave lead to the life essence coming out and going into that blood altar there. As you can see, there's 1.6 buckets in there now, and that gets piped round, 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 and goes into all of these tanks over here, and so I can now pick up this tank. Thank you very much. Give. Thank you. And replace it with with the other one I brought I, I brought with me, and that can start filling up from the from the other tanks, as, as you can see. So we've got plenty plenty of uh, life essence being made over here. But also, we've now got additional vector plates in here that push the mobs around in a circle. So just generally to try and keep them moving, although they do have a bit of a tendency just to build up on the um, on the blood altar. But if you stand here for long enough, then enough of them will spawn in, and they'll start to crowd each other off there, which means they then end up on the on the plates going around here. And what we have over here is a spiked plate and underneath it is a sanguinary pedestal and that means you can the spike plate will kill them will kill them any mobs that stand on it and then the blood trickles down into the sanguinary pedestal that's what the pedestal is there for and sanguinary hence the bloody stuff in fact if i take this out there we go you can see there, there's a sanguinary pedestal and there's then a fluid duct coming from there and going into the back of this tank uh let's put that block back before i because it lets it lets light into the mob farm, I believe. So we can then come along here. We can put in a tank underneath there, and bloop, it just fill up from from that tank. I can now claim. Where's my two oh, other? It is. I can then reclaim that tank, and I've now got a completely full tank of blood. So I've got, and this is an iron tank, which means it carries two hundred and fifty thousand, two hundred and fifty six thousand millibuckets, also known as two hundred and fifty six buckets. And you can see it filling up there quite relatively quickly as the mobs stand here and get spiked by the uh, spiky plate and get rapidly, quite rapidly killed. So that's working well, and this is producing a nice steady supply of blood, 256 buckets at a time, um, which I can then carry back by hand over to the um, the other side. Now we did, I did talk in the past about having having some um, pipes coming through here. These ones, this, this comes from the life essence, and I was talking about running mm, pipes all the way down this massive long service tunnel. <clears throat> but I've been essentially told and convinced that it's not worth it. You might as well just have, um, you might as well save up and and uh, make the make ender tanks, which will allow the stuff to be teleported. And also because this this chunk isn't always loaded, as you know, when you may have noticed when I arrived, there were no mobs in here. But now that I'm standing here, they're spawning in quite a lot more quickly, and we're getting quite a lot of them. And so all the resources are getting. Uh, accumulated um, so you need to have somebody basically wandering over here anyway in order for the mobs to spawn in and to get the resources so you might as well come over with a suitably large tank like one of these 256 bucket ones and just fill it up by hand and then carry it back across yourself there's there's not really much point in in having that having the pipe systems because you still have to come over here and just stand around waiting for the for, the, for, for it to all um, accumulate. But it is nice and easy. Tristan said he uh, stood around here AFK while he while he spent 10 minutes doing something else, um, and the tank was completely filled up, which is why I managed to get a complete tank worth here. Um, so it's not enormous, it's not particularly slow, and there's a decent supply of both of the resources coming out here. So I think this is working more than well enough. Now let's get out of here. Ooh. I should use my hook because I apparently am not capable of uh, slime slinging out in one go. Right, and let's get back over to the main base with all, this, all these nice shiny new resources that I've gathered. And now that I'm back over here, 
I can drop these tanks off. So let's see. This is the this is the blood. So I need to put in the iron tank of blood like that. And we've got loads of this. I'm 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 not really getting through it at any at a particularly high rate at the moment. So um, either I make a lot more tanks to keep it in, or or to be honest, I just don't worry about it and and, and use it up and, and go back and get more as and when 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 it's eventually required. But for now, everything is completely full, which I feel is quite an achievement. So that, as, as I showed you last time, runs through the underground pipes, goes into the tower, and that can then be used for all of the uh, all of the dark magic stuff over there. Speaking of the tower, between streams, some rather cheeky person came along and built some. Um... Why can I not use this lift? Came along and built some giant chickens on the uh, on the top of it. Um, I wouldn't like to say I wouldn't. I don't know why. I mean, apart from because they thought it was amusing, which is probably enough of a reason. But yes, there are now four giant majestic chickens gazing out over, out from the tower over the landscape. And this one appears to have made a bit of a mess. But um, yes, I, uh, and there's seeds up here to feed them. That's why Mike was running around saying, I'm just here to feed the chickens because he's weird like that. Um, yes, so we have, we have giant chickens and they are, in fact, giant concrete chickens because, of course, they are. Why not? I have also noticed, to some minor amusement, that presumably, in order to save on resources, not only are there giant, not only are they giant chickens. Let's turn this on before I do this. There are also giant hollow chickens, and oh, there's some mobs in this one. That's um, a mild concern. Let's not go. Let's not go in there. Let's let's just leave that well alone and tell Mike his chicken his his chickens have um, have been become possessed. Right, what else have people been doing? Well, Al has... I think I mentioned this briefly in the last episode because he, he said he'd done it, but I didn't know where to look. Al has started um, bee breeding. So over here, we've got all these apiaries, um, which are filled with bees, uh, or have bees in them. This one, this one has five meadow drones, some honeycomb, and three meadow drones on the other side. I don't really understand how bees work, so I suggest you watch Al's... Um, video uh, which he'll which will probably be coming out today or tomorrow um, and he'll probably he'll talk about the bees at great length and, and, and all that sort of stuff but I do know that you can put in drones and queens on this side and then you get um, they, and they will breed together and you'll get they you will get bees of a different with different stats and as, as you as you breed them in theory they get better and better and I think the princess ones are ones that can be then turned into queens and the drones can't but you need you need drones and queens in order to produce more bees um, and eventually you're supposed to be able to <clears throat> make bees that um, I don't know how to search for bees because there's so many things in um... well here we go oh right if I search for maybe if I search for drone there we go. So there's a lot of different types of bees, uh, from Roman, Tatari, Cinnabar, Creepy, Rocky, Ruby, Sapphire. And I think these work in a similar way to the um, mystical agriculture, where if you can create the bees of the relevant type for what you're trying to make, so maybe there's an iron bee in here somewhere. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. There's certainly an emerald drone, so maybe if you get an emerald drone, you can get emeralds from it somehow. I, I don't entirely un understand how the system works. But, or maybe you maybe you put various types of bees together. As I say, I, well, let's have a look. Look, look at an emerald drone. Okay, you can you can put a lapis princess and a forest drone together to, to get to get to get an emerald queen. Okay, or with your bee breed. I, I don't know. I don't really know how bees work. As I say, come back and, and uh, come back watch Al's video, which will be linked at the end of this one if he's released it in time, or will will be linked uh, later if he hasn't, and he'll tell you all about it. I'm sure. It's occurred to me, I forgot to mention, this is this is a relatively minor thing, but I did also upgrade... I fell in the water. Um, <laughs> I also upgraded the um, the blood infuser in the tower by making a, um, a promise of tenacity 2, which allows you to... Uh, which costs a load of... quite a lot of blood. You, you, you make some various promises. You make bowls of promises. I'm, I'm, I don't know what that's trying to imply or do, but it is a thing that you can create in my in, in the blood magic stuff in Minecraft, and that allows you to upgrade the blood infuser. So in here, I've now put in a promise of tenacity too, um, and that has meant that has expanded the, the amount of blood you can store in here to 160 buckets instead of the probably 40 of a tier, what, tier 0. Um, it also increases the number of slots available here. So if you have a, t a an unmodified blood infuser then you have one upgrade slot available here if you put a promise of tenacity one into it then you get a second one 
um, as well as the promise of tenacity. So you can have two potentially have two things in there, and it expands the amount of storage you can, you've got in there. If you put the promise of tenacity two in, you get an extra two um, store, uh, upgrade slots available, and so you can use this to to you to, um, to to. Uh, it increases the amount of blood the infuser holds, which I think probably means you can potentially infuse bigger things with it. I think it increases the speed as well, although that's just a sort of a looking at it and a sort of a general feeling. So I wouldn't like to say for sure, but I suspect it's, it's a bit quicker. Building the iron tanks for carrying blood around in was a, a little bit of a mission. Let's have a quick look at the, how, how you make those. So... Yeah, okay, you look at that, you think, yeah, that looks like all of the other tanks. So that's not too bad. It's a load of iron plates, sure, because it's an iron tank. You've got some hardened glass, you've got some glass. Fine. Um, but no, it's not quite that simple, because firstly, this is hardened steel glass. And secondly, you require a, diam a diamatine plate as well. Now, diamatine plates are a thing we have in, in stock, so that was actually quite easy. Probably somebody else went to an enormous amount of effort to find the diamatine crystals. Um, but I was able to just nick them, because that's how this game works. But the, uh, the steel glass was a little bit more of an effort, because I had to make hardened glass, um, which is made out of goodness knows what. You can use any hardened glass, but there's no point in using anything other than the most basic hardened glass. Oh yes, you have to crush obsidiarite and um, uh, and obsidian, but you have to do it in the, in the right sort of proportions, because otherwise Tristan tells you off for putting random dusts back in the, uh, in, in the storage system. And that allows you to make hardened glass. And then from that, you can then mix that with, where is it? Uh, you can then mix it with steel blend, which is basically just pulverized steel ingots. So that's easy again. Um, and that makes the hardened steel glass. So it's not too difficult, but there's a fair amount of time waiting for iron, pl iron plates to be squashed, waiting for hard hardened glass to cook, waiting for the obsidian to crush, waiting and putting it all together. So it took me a while to make these iron tanks. And perhaps I should make a load more because they are rather good and they're not too difficult to make. They just require a load of stuff. Um, and they are, yeah, and, and carrying, being able to carry 256 buckets in a tank is quite useful. And if I shoved a couple of those in over here instead of these copper tanks, then I get enormous amounts of storage space. So, I mean, here, this entire stack of probably mostly, if not entirely, stone tanks holds 160 buckets. I could replace this entire stack with one iron tank and have exactly the same amount of storage space. So they are the bigger tanks are or the higher tier tanks are incredibly powerful for compressing down the amount of space you need to store all of your resources. Um, but that said, I do have probably almost close to 500 buckets worth of blood stored here. So I probably don't actually need bigger <laughs> bigger tanks to keep it in. It's just going to be it would only be in order to keep the um, the supply end busy and to be honest a couple of tanks later 10-15 minutes later it would all be full anyway so there's not really any point in doing that the next thing I want to talk about is a rather um, overly complicated um, thing that uh, Tristan has been working on now we've got these um, lovely signs up here now um, which with our various logos on so you've got oh, I don't know where to stand for this Right, so over here we now have these lovely um, signs with our various logos on. So we've got obviously my, my one up here, we've got Al's, Al's one over there because he's the other other streamer in the group. <clears throat> and then Tristan's done his own sign as well because, um, because, because well, he's been doing it, so why not? I guess at some point we'll, we'll probably try and get Pete's and Mike's in there as well. Um, but that's, that's going to come, come in the future because these things are a fair amount of effort to produce, it turns out. And so let, let's, have, let's go and have a look at how those are done. They're made through a fairly complicated system, which I, sh which I shall, um, I shall, sh I shall show you. And this requires me to travel quite a long distance, so I'm going to use, so um, I'm going to use a, uh, a new transport system, which has been um, put together by, I think, um, probably by Tristan. I'm not, sure, um, or Tristan and Mike, I think. It was sort of a, a joint, a joint effort between the two of them. So we can travel through here into the, um, into the Nether. Then we need to go up, up the um, tube here. Right, and once you've climbed all the way to the top of the nether, somewhere, is it up here? Yes, I think it's up here. Yes, here we go. So you put down a minecart like this, you get in it, and you boop the button, and then the minecart takes you off all the way to the, um, well, just all the way, because this is quite this is quite a long ride. So we sh I shall fast forward through all of this, because there's no point in making you uh, watch the whole thing. Now, the reason I've come into the nether for this is because ne distances in the nether are significantly compressed compared to in the real world so if you travel 
I don't know exactly how what, what the sort of the scale is, but if you travel, say, 10 blocks in the nether, it turns out you've traveled 100 blocks in the real world or something like that. And so putting this system in here means you can travel a lot more quickly than if you did it all manually and just traveled through the, through the overworld as normal. Many moments later. Eventually you arrive at the other end, there's a, an exciting little drop and it drops you off by another um, portal, and apparently there's a goat, there's a goat, I uh, know, a, pig, a pygmy doe here. So, right, at this point, I can teleport out of the nether, back into the real world, and oh, there's some very various mobs and things out here. Mike has also come out to join me. So, the idea, of, the point of this, I'll just fly up and sort of buzz around a little bit, is as you can see, Tristan has made an absolutely enormous version, let's get some height, of his logo out probably out of concrete or wool or something like that and then he's created a map of it a map tile of it which then looks obviously like his logo which you can then stick up in the base and apparently they only update if you t map tiles only update if you take them to near where they were created <clears throat> and that means that so that means that these will remain forever as long as the maps don't get moved they will remain forevermore as our logos which is quite nice uh, that's only 3k away, I might fly back um, yeah, so as you can see we've got these giant images and then they get trans and then they get converted into the um, the normal uh, oops uh, and they get converted into the into the smaller versions that are stuck up on the base now that took quite a long time to get over here so I probably shouldn't leave the, um, the minecart here, so let's pick that up there we go and I'm going to just fly back on the under the power of fireworks because I think that's going to be a bit quicker and a bit more interesting, and we can see some of the um, some of the world as we do it. Use the um, slime sling to get airborne, start flying, and then there's some convenient um, uh, markers over this way of things I've done things I've done previously, like found, finding the ast an astral sorcery place, and also one of my deaths, which I which I think happened while I was messing around with the um, uh, mob farm. Entertainingly, as Tristan pointed out. He was doing the dangerous part of messing around with the mob farm. I was just uh, fiddling with the uh, with with the automation part of it, and yet I was the one who ended up dying. So that probably just goes to show how good I am at this game. Ooh, I um, I have no idea what that is, but it looks mildly interesting. There's a ship down there. And finally, I'm home again. I hope you've enjoyed that quick flight around the um, around the area around our uh, our base. It's been it's, it's nice to have a bit of a look around from time to time. Although I might get into trouble for exploring when I'm not supposed to. <laughs> and so that is be that is basically it for this episode. There's been a little bit of continuation of some of the uh, quest lines as well. So I'm sure there's probably a few things I could um, ha I, I could bring out here and explode with into the. Um, into the uh, in, in the exploding room and just hand in a load of quests. Let's, let's have a quick look at that, in fact, while we're here. Uh, let's see what other people have been up to. So if we look at the tier, main quest line, yeah, there's a load more blue stuff in here. So people have been make, doing more sort of electronics and computing and and stuff like that. So there, there is there is a lot of other stuff that other people have been doing, but you'll have to um, see their videos for those of them who are actually making them um, to see more about that. And I know Mike's been doing a load of food as well. So there's, there's plenty, plenty been going on. But thank you for watching. This has been uh, Minecraft Dungeons, Dragons and Space Shuttles. And I hope to see you next time. Don't forget to come back for the uh, stream on, 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 on. When, when do we stream? We stream on Mondays. So come, come along for the stream on Mondays. And there's a Factorio stream on Wednesdays where I'm playing uh, Factorio Space Exploration. So lots of exciting stuff in there. Um, I do, rec do recommend that one as well. Um, and of course, don't forget, and uh, please subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to get to up to um, up to a thousand uh, subscribers at the moment because I think that's a sort of a nice, a nice, a nice um, target on YouTube that will give me a good progression for the for the for the channel. So that's my my, my goal at the moment, which I'm trying to push towards. And there's the catch up videos at the weekends to watch, of course, and um, and maybe some GTA videos from time to time as I, as I make them. So as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.